Chapter 23 The trick would be in the timing. Wrangling Lester earlier in the day had been surprisingly easy, but he knew Flim Flamming Lil was going to be a lot harder. She had to believe, without a doubt, that we'd call home with that we'd called home, or she wouldn't be satisfied. I remembered Bobby mimicking her mother over meatloaf at the dinner table that night before, and how she'd sounded just like Miss Rosemary. I also remembered how Will Jr. had threatened Bobby with telling their parents how she'd called into st- how she'd called into school using her mother's voice to excuse her own absences when she ditched classes. With two motel rooms, one across the hall from the other, I figured we just might be able to pull off my scheme. It was for Lil's own good, I told myself again and again. I had to keep her and Lester out of trouble. If we called home now, who knew what might happen? But if we could lay low until we reached Selena Hope Hospital tomorrow, maybe Lester and Lil could get on their way without anyone knowing that they'd helped us out or blaming them wrongly for carrying us off. Lil inspected both rooms before assigning the boys to one and us girls to the other. Bobby and I were in 214 with Lil, and the three boys were in 215. Just pick up your phone when it rings, Fish, I whispered to my brother before we separated. Pick it up, but don't say anything. Stay on the phone and let Bobby in if she knocks. We've got to rely on Bobby now. Fish nodded, glancing at Will du- uh, sorry. Fish nodded, glancing at Bobby dubiously, dubiously, sorry. And then followed Sa- Samson and Will Jr into room 215. Once inside the room across the hall, Lil pointed to the telephone and said, Bobby, please call your parents now and tell them where you all are. They must be worried sick, the poor folks. Bobby shot me a wide-eyed, what do I do now, look, and moved slowly toward the phone. She picked up the receiver like she was moving through water, watching Lil as the woman removed her sweater and hung it on the doorknob of the closet. I nearly jumped for joy when Lil flicked the light on in the bathroom and closed the door behind her. Bobby may not have had a savvy in the same way as we Beaumonts, but it was time for her to use her own very own uh, use her very own special kind of know-how. Before Lil could return, I rushed to Bobby's side and told her exactly what she had to do. She looked at me like I'd lost my marbles. She thinks you're crazy. Her angel tattoo sang in my head. This isn't like calling in to trick the school secretary, Mibs, Bobby whispered harshly. What if it doesn't work? We could already hear Lil washing her hands in the bathroom and had no time to argue. Just do it, I said, pointing to the number printed on the motel phone. Bobby dialed, glancing over her shoulder toward the bathroom as she made a room-to-room call. Lil opened the door and stepped back out into the room, smoothing her skirt and scraping at the pie spatter that had dried on the front of it. She looked up as Bobby started talking. Hi, Mom. It's Bobby. Bobby shot me a glare as she pretended to talk to her mother, with Fish now sitting silently on the other end of the line across the hall. But Bobby was a good actress, at times. During her brief, one-sided conversation, even I forgot that she was faking as she explained to dead air where we were and how we'd gotten there and how we were all going to get down to the to the hospital in Selena tomorrow. No, mother, we're perfectly safe, I promise, Bobby insisted. Yes, mother, you can talk to Mibs. She's right here. Bobby rolled her eyes and slumped her shoulders dramatically. She held the telephone out to me. I looked sheepishly at Lil as I and took the phone, hoping I could do half as well at play, at play acting as Bobby had. I held the receiver to my chest for a moment, as though looking for the courage to put it to my ear. I'm going to check up on the boys, Bobby said, grabbing a room key and getting up to leave the room. My mother wants to talk to you next, Lil, she said, opening the door, then letting it slam shut behind her. Lil's face was pale. She chewed the cuticle of her pinky and took a deep breath. I could tell she wasn't looking forward to the idea of talking to the preacher's wife, and I felt shamed and sorry for tricking her. It's for our own good, I reminded myself. Then I lifted the phone to my ear, just as I heard Bobby knocking on the door across the hall. Miss Rosemary? It's Mibs. I'm sorry, I started out. 
I measured my pauses as I spoke haltingly into the phone, trying to make it seem as though I was getting a tongue lashing. There was a clatter on the other end of the line. "'You're going straight to hell, Mississippi Beaumont,' said Bobby, in a voice so much like Miss Rosemary's that I nearly dropped the line. That I nearly dropped the phone, sorry. Then she snickered. "'Put that waitress on, then start praying.' Bobby was way too good at this. I hoped she'd go easy on poor Lil. I held the telephone out to Lil and swallowed hard. She wants to talk to you, I said. I held my breath the entire time Lil was on the phone, with Bobby slash Miss Rosemary. I wasn't entirely sure what Bobby said. I was only able to catch a word or two of Bobby's end of the conversation, when her voice rose in pitch and volume and carried out from the receiver. But Lil worked hard to make it known that all of us kids were healthy and whole and in good hands with her and Lester. She gave over the name of our motel and the phone number. We'd be glad to bring the kidlings home, or down to the hospital in Salina, Mrs. Meeks. Unless you'd rather come and get them right away, Lil said nervously. My lungs felt fit to burst. I wished I could hear Bobby reply. That girl was fast in her feet when it came to deceit and I couldn't decide whether I admired her or felt sorry for her for having such a skill. At last, the conversation began to wind down. That will be just fine, ma'am, said Lil. We'll see you all in Salana tomorrow, then. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you, too, ma'am. I could just picture Bobby in the room across the hall saying, God bless you, to Lil, in Miss Rosemary's stern voice. I shook my head, praying Bobby didn't push her luck and wishing she'd just hang up the phone already. When Lil finally set the telephone down, color was returning to her cheeks. That went better than I expected, said Lil, with her little smile. That Rosemary seems like a good, strong woman. She's going to call your family and tell them that you and your brothers are safe, Mibs. Great, I said, half-heartedly, feeling low, low, low about our double-dealing deception. I heard the key swipe the lock and the door open. Bobby, Will, and Fish all sauntered into the room, looking like a bunch of cats that who just finished feasting on an entire flock of canaries. Fortunately, Lil was so relieved to be off the phone, she didn't even notice.